Hey guys, what's going on? It's Josh here with Take Em TV today, and today we're going to be talking about my 16 foot John boat that I built into a little mini bass boat, and it was awesome. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any video footage of me actually building this boat behind me, but I do have a lot of pictures, and so I'm going to put those all in a big slideshow basically at the end of that, or at the end of this video, and I'm going to talk about it uh, and some of the steps that I went through on building this boat. Mainly right now I want to do a big overview of the boat and kind of show you guys um, the finished product and everything and I'm going to have some good pictures in here so that way you guys can look at, look at those as well. But for now let's jump right into this and uh, break this boat down. Okay so starting off like I was saying this is a 16 foot John boat and it is specifically a 1636 meaning that the bottom of the boat is 36 inches wide so yes this is a more narrow john boat but the thing was still awesome i love it still um i just upgraded to a little bit of a bigger one i ended up going to a 1648 that i found on a good deal um, but right here as you guys can see right on the back on either side i have light pods as well as flotation pods uh, the light pods really help for backing into the boat ramp at night um, or early in the morning for duck hunting and I put these float pods on the back here uh, just because I am a little bit of a bigger guy and uh, my friends are all a little bit bigger too uh, so I figured these would help with stabilization with it also being a 36 inch boat and I think these did wonders for the boat now I didn't have them welded on I actually went ahead and I did the rivet method hopefully you guys can see those but right there so there are six of these rivets Oop. there's six of them there's another three up under here on the transom um, but each side has six of six quarter inch rivets holding on those float pods and they're strong like i can pick the whole boat up by this uh, it's also attached with 3M5200 on the inside as well and around the outside to seal it so no water leaks in. Now, going up from there, I have the, the rear bench seat is the only seat that is still in the boat. And I just went ahead, I saw this on YouTube from another guy, and just cut out the middle of the bench seat, pull all the foam out, and then kind of add some support into the middle so that way it's rigid again but doing that gives you another storage space and I have it on both sides right in there this is where I keep all my life jackets I have three in here this boat's rated for five people but three people in this boat is more than plenty so those are those two latches on either side and then moving into the middle, I just, I wanted a big open space. So this is roughly seven and a half feet of an open floor deck. And I actually cut out the bench seat that was here. Uh, so basically what I did was, I don't know if you guys can see those patches right there. Yeah, you can kind of see it. Um, so I went ahead and I used this uh, aluminum soldering rod and soldered or soldered all the holes shut and then what you see right there is actually a marine epoxy that I just put over the top and it's on both the inside and the outside of the boat um, and I've never had a problem with them leaking at all so in my book that was a success I did it there and then I also did it underneath this big main deck uh, where the third seat was uh, but you can't see that because there's a big deck in the way now moving along Right here. I have my electrical box. I Didn't necessarily want to try and figure out a way on how to shove all the electronics and the wiring underneath this deck Because I knew I was gonna take this boat duck hunting So I wanted the the wires the switch panel a little bit more protected So I ended up putting it all in this waterproof tote now if we take it off I have some essentials in there and it does kind of look like a mess but it's super simple so this is just your six panel rocker switch and then all of these red wires right here 
are all your power wires that are going to the different things in the boat. And then this big main switch is our main power. So you turn that on and now this all has power. And as you can see, I got the lights coming on. I got my, my red and greens going on in the front. Um, I do have a little bilge pump in the back. And then I do have 12 volt, another 12 volt, and this actually will tell me my battery voltage, which is super, super nice. But just inside here, I got some toilet paper because you never know. And then I have a bunch of fuses, zip ties, just in case anything's to get wet or to pop. I have a way of getting, you know, back because a lot of the, the lakes that I fish around here are all electric only. And so having a... Um, a good electronic system and having parts to be able to fix your electronic systems on your boat uh, to me was super important but now if I crawl up in here on the inside right here if I move some of these wires out of the way you can see the fuse panel that I have installed so this basically tells me everything you know I have an accessory that's open I have my nav lights interior lights I have my drive lights a light bar and then a bilge pump so that's all that I have right now and I have the other side which is completely empty still so if I wanted to I could go ahead and add even another switch panel inside of here to where I could put like a fish finder on it or other electronics that I that I wanted um, which is the super nice thing about this so and having it in this tote I, I can kind of move it around just a little bit but for the most part this is what I liked uh, just because it also gave me another another place to sit okay now moving on to the main deck of the boat right here as you can tell I have one two three four hatches on the boat only three of them are actual storage and I tried to design them as a like a dry hatch storage system so they have totes on the inside of them if you open them up these two open to the side and this one opens long ways but they are just some 12 gallon totes that I bought from my local hardware store I don't know if you guys can see uh, but down in each corner actually oh there you go down here in the corner I actually had to poke a little hole for water to drain out of them because there is no there's no channel system on this so when it rains water will come in here and it'll just kind of pool in so I had to poke a little holes in each side of the the totes on the bottom corners only so that way water would drain out but overall I mean when you're out on the water you need storage these fit tackle boxes perfectly going long ways so you can put four in each tote and they're supported by the floor so they're not going to fall down and break um, but you can hold 12 tackle boxes right here plus stuff on top of it because they don't fill it up all the way so if you wanted you could use one honestly as like a dry storage for clothes for the day or you could put ice in one of them and use it as a cooler now for granted it probably wouldn't last too long because it's not insulated but you could do that if you wanted um, and then you just have the option of tackle storage so something that I definitely want to change on my next boat that I build here is uh, the way I designed the storage so like right now it works great it's all super you know right in a line but I'd like to have some smaller ones so that way I could put pliers in there or um, like pot, like drink holders as weird as it is just little things like that is something that would set this boat off to a completely different level but as you guys can tell the construction framing of this boat is all aluminum there's no wood framing in this boat whatsoever the only wood in the boat are the hatches and the deck and obviously back here but overall the the wood 
held up great for a year. I'm starting to see little signs of wear and tear on it right now. Um, it is just a, it is a three quarter inch, five layer sanded plywood that I went ahead and painted with some oil based paint to try and help the waterproof ability on it. Even though it's wood, even though it's painted, it's still gonna have some water issues. Um, but overall, it's held up great. Like I've said in previous videos, I'm not a small guy. I'm six foot one, 230 pounds, and I can stand on these hatches all day. Um, one other thing that I might do in my next boat build is instead of just leaving them bare wood underneath, I might go ahead and put a little plate of aluminum or something there just to kind of help a little bit more. Um, but then also doing that you could run a gasket around the edges that I think would help water seal the hatches a little bit more. Um, so then you're not getting water into the totes here. And then that could also be a, a good dry hatch system. Now I know Tiny Boat Nation, you know, those guys who build these professionally, they have really good videos out there on how to do waterproof hatches, um, you know, total DIY. And I watched a lot of those. I just, I just didn't have the time to really try and do that to this. So I took their tote idea, their V1 storage, whatever, and I implemented it into this boat and it works great. For just a little weekend warrior boat, little pond hopper, this thing is awesome. Um, so for anybody that's wondering about that, there you go. All right, so now moving on to the final compartment up here on the boat. This is where I have my battery storage. Now I run two deep cycle batteries. They are M27-DC batteries. Uh, currently right now they're configured in a 12 volt option, but my trolling motor that I run is 24 volt. And I have a little fuse right there that I can switch a wire over to and then my trolling motor plugs right into there on the deck. And then I have a NOCO 2 battery Gen 5 battery charger, thing works great. And I have a port right there so you can just plug an extension cord right into the boat and it'll charge these batteries up. Now, these two batteries, I've been out on the water for six and a half hours, almost an entire day, and these two batteries have ran great on the boat, running a 70 pound, 24 volt trolling motor, no problem, all day long, so. You don't really need a huge, huge battery bank in my opinion, but this is this is pretty much what you need right here. Now as you guys can tell, you can see a little bit more of the aluminum framing going on in this boat. And you can also see some random wires that I have in there. Those are wires for my light bars on my duck blind that I put on this boat for duck season. So I just kind of tuck them underneath the deck for storage purposes but other than that all of the wiring that you see right here is just for the batteries and then i have this one little main power wire running all the way back down out of the side right here and i have it protected by a little three quarter inch piece of pvc pipe shoved in between the runners on the boat and then that runs into our battery box now for all of the wiring in the boat that goes to items such as my nav lights my interior lights um, some bilge pump light bars all that kind of stuff all of the wiring does run in these channels that I just took a piece of three-quarter inch PVC pipe and shoved in there uh, it's just protection for the wire it's protection for you doing all of that work right there just allows the wires to be protected and they can you don't have to worry about them getting caught or anything so they just run right back here and they go straight to the pods or they go right into my bilge pump now I have a 1100 gallon per hour bilge pump on this thing and I've never had to use it um, no matter what guys if you don't think you need one please put a bilge pump on your boat just in case you guys do hit a rock you guys do hit a tree something you know 
puts a big hole in your boat, you can at least try and battle your way back to shore rather than just letting the boat sink. This, in my opinion, is a huge safety device to have on any sort of boat. Please, please, please put one on your boat. All right, now for the exterior of the boat. I just went ahead and I did a rattle can paint job on it. So the base is a Rust-Oleum tan. And as you can tell, I mean, it's kind of, it's coming off in some areas. I've used this boat a lot this last year. It probably went in the water a good 30, 40 times, whether it be fishing, duck hunting, whatever. But I'm honestly thoroughly impressed on how the paint held up for all the abuse that I put it through. Now for the camo pattern, I had one of my friends cut out uh, just like a hex clad pattern, kind of like that right there. Um, she cut out a whole bunch of different sheets for me, different sizes, different patterns, different orientations. And there is black, gray, and brown in this pattern. And I think it just, it looks awesome. It's kind of like a knockoff hex camo, but it's just something that you don't see very often. And honestly, it didn't take me very long, just patience. But I think it sets the boat off on just how cool and different it can look. And that is also a Rust-Oleum just spray paint out of the can. All right guys, well that's gonna do it for the overview on my 16 foot John boat, two bass boat right here. Um, like I mentioned, I also use this boat for hunting. Uh, so a lot of the pictures that I have coming up in this slideshow right after this, uh, is gonna be me building a blind for the boat. That's what I took a lot of pictures of. But I do have some pretty good pictures on how I did the framing and the totes uh, coming up too. So if you guys want to stay, check it out. It'd be greatly appreciated. If you guys have any comments on how I built this boat, materials I used to build this boat, how much it cost, um, the electro electronic system, anything, please just leave it down in the comments. Uh, I'd be glad to answer. This is a super basic, basic, basic build. I think it total cost me about $1,000 to build uh, after I bought the boat for 500 bucks. So $1,500 boat build, it's not that bad. Um, but yeah, like I said, if you guys have any questions, any comments, please leave them down there. I will respond to every single one of them. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Peace. guys I'm just gonna have a couple pictures playing here uh, these are just some better high quality photos of the boat that I took today while I was recording this video just kind of give you guys a little bit more of a better perspective and then coming up I'm gonna have some videos playing of how the boat was when I first got it it was definitely super rough uh, the kid that I bought it from said he bought it from a guy who used to run it on the river and uh, had a big motor on it. Well, the transom was definitely in some rough shape, as you'll see right here. Uh, the guy had so many holes in the back of the transom, so many bolts, it was pretty crazy, but overall, it was in good condition, so I decided to buy it. So right here is really when the boat build started, and I decided to take out the two bench seats. And then from there, I went ahead and I painted it. I threw in the original aluminum framing. I doubled that up, but that's pretty much the basis. From there, I went ahead and riveted on the, the rear pods. Here's another picture of it, a little bit closer. And I filled in all those holes too. And then uh, I bought this mud motor off Facebook Market for a hundred bucks. Worked great. The only problem that I ran into was it was a six and a half horse. So it was a little small, so I later upgraded to a 13 horse. And then this is just some of the pictures of the basic woodwork, cutting it out, made sure I labeled everything, 
and I made sure it was directional on where it was facing for when I put it back on the carpet. <sighs> Carpet's done. And then attaching it all right here. And finally, test day. I filled the boat up quite a bit with water before this, but that was the first time I ever tested it. And then me and my girlfriend decided to take it out fishing last year and uh, had a pretty good time. We went out three or four times, crappie fishing, and slayed them. But I knew duck season was coming up here soon, so I decided to work on the duck boat side of it here. And this is all just basic framing, and it's all half-inch conduit. Bolted to the side rail of the boat, but super easy to bend, super easy to work with. The connectors that I used, I'll have linked down in the description, but they just, one bolt goes right up. It works awesome. The only downside is that the conduit's a little heavy. So the frame of the blind was probably 200, 250 pounds. And then this plastic that you see on the sides right here, uh, I got for free actually from my work, but that was pretty light, helped stop wind, um, and just looked great. And here's a little walkthrough of the blind itself. So as you can see, all the conduit framing in there with the plastic on the outside. I've got two doors on it, one in the front to get in, and then one on the front of the boat to put decoys and stuff in, because that's kind of what we used as a storage area. And then this is when I finally went ahead and did the full electric system on the boat. I did all the wiring, I uh, got the battery set up, I did all the navigation lights, and uh, the two big light bars up on the front. But overall, it was great. Here's a good solid picture of the ending for it. So. And so the $500 Saga boat continues. Jeez, she's a wide boy. Fast Tracker 3?